Welcome Capricorn, it's May 2015, I'm Dedici Toth from astrology.com.au with your monthly uh, forecast. And uh, I, I guess the predominating theme here, and will be for a long time, and I've talked about it before, is the movement of your ruling planet Saturn through the 12th house. <clears throat> Not an easy house, because it, it's one of those houses like the 8th house, which is somewhat hidden, secretive. To actually make heads or tails of it, sometimes it takes a bit of time for you to, you know, allow the energy to percolate. In any case, it does tend to show us the mistakes we've made in the past and how we can somehow reconcile that to improve our lives for the for the future. And this month also we see some important uh, spiritual and creative connotations in that fifth house of yours with the Sun, Mars and Mercury occupying that area on the 1st of May. Mercury moves out of that into the 6th house where we see Venus right now and that will shift a bit of your focus away from that creativity but certainly give you the impetus to bring some of that creativity into your workplace. No doubt having Venus there also shows you you're, you're trying to make something more of the environment that you work in and if you haven't been getting on too well with the people your co-workers in that workplace environment. This is a time when you can pacify them and, and create a better relationship. Now, some of you may want to stay in the background, but my recommendation is that you come out of your shell now and try to engage those people that you haven't done too well with. You know, it's surprising sometimes, even if you don't feel as if you've gotten on well with someone, if they're, you know, cantankerous, You've just got to get them in the right mood at the right time. And you may actually find that there's something that you can connect with with that particular person. Also, having the Mars and Sun in that fifth house is a very powerful testimony for uh, competitiveness and, uh, you know, sports and, and that type of thing. So you should maybe look at doing something that can uh, give you the outlet for that competitive spirit. A couple of other important things this month. The new moon and the full moon, I like to talk about that because they do punctuate very strongly where the uh, <coughs> predominant factors uh, and focus are going to be. The full moon occurs on the 4th, which is in the 11th house of Scorpio, which is your friendships. So that uh, is likely to also blossom. And then the 5th house again, which we've been talking about on the 18th, is when the new moon occurs. So 5th house, 11th house has to do with relationships of a social nature, of a romantic nature, and uh, in some cases too, the fifth house relating to children uh, has to do with paternal paternal uh, influence. So these areas are strongly focused for you on the 4th the and the 18th. But as I've said to some of the other star signs, rest assured that you may not feel the full impact of this immediately on that day. There will be something happening, but let it percolate a little and you'll see that uh, over the coming weeks and months that these two areas of your horoscope are going to be a significant part of your life. <clears throat> now chronologically looking here, Venus moving to the seventh house on the eighth is excellent for the relationships. It really brings a lot of sweetness and love and uh, congeniality to you know your communication with the person you love. Mars moves to the 6th on the 12th of May, and that's excellent for competitiveness. It uh, gives you the opportunity to... Um, now, you have a choice, as I said earlier, to engage those people you don't particularly get on well with, or you can crush them. I say make love, not war. Uh, if you can uh, create some allies at that time, that's where pulling back the reins of power is going to be your greatest challenge uh, and a measure of your strength. It's easy to let go of a bunch of wild horses but to hold them back is really the test of strength there's a retrogression of mercury this month everyone dreads it but for you it's not a bad thing it's it's one of the better planets in the scheme of uh, your zodiac circle and it rules the ninth house which is a, a lucky sort of planet and shows us some good fortune stemming from some of your past good actions a few final elements there the the uh, the transit of the Sun to the sixth house again you know Mercury in the sixth conjoined to Mars and Sun in the sixth conjoined to Mercury pointing to this sixth house along with that new moon as this workplace area being vitally important and 
maybe even a little more important than that is the fact that this sixth house has to do with your health. So beginning your new exercise regime, dietary constraints, looking at how you can improve your health and your well-being, and, and also doing that um, hand in glove with the way you're dealing with your co-workers, I think is going to set the stage for a really nice energy in your life and uh, movement forward that's going to be comfortable for you. Hope to see you here next month. I'm here every month. In the meantime, do pop in to visit uh, my website, astrology.com.au. Two million people did last month. I hope you'll be one of them. And uh, you can avail yourself of some of the more detailed analysis on the daily, monthly and yearly horoscopes, along with personal readings, if you choose that with me and some of my associates. And uh, lots of free stuff too. Come one, come all. Till next month, take care. Bye-bye.